Mpumelelo Zigalala is a legal practitioner at Zigalala Attorneys and he joins us now for this conversation. A very good evening to you, Mr. Zigalala, and thank you so much for speaking to us. Your understanding of what the ANC is saying about uh, the use of its trademark and the rights it enjoys, can you just explain it to us in layman's terms so that we understand effectively are we saying that the ANC owns uh, or has pat patented uh, the name Umkonto Wesizwe. Hey, good evening to another two of viewers. Basically, that's what the ANC is saying, saying that the name Umkonto Wesizwe and even the logo that we see going around there in, in, in the media space is something that belongs to them. It has always been a brand or a mark which is identifiable or linked to them in some way or another. And the minute we say Umkonto Wesizwe, it can't be stated alone without the name ANC being associated with it. Now, there are two things in which they are, they are gunning for in terms of their defense on, or the, the line which they're going to attack with. The first one is, is the trademark act that says, if you have a registered trademark that says that particular trademark belongs to you, either in the design of the logo that is there, anyone that wants to use it would need your permission first. Anyone that uses it without your permission has committed an offense in terms of, in terms of Section 34. Even if in terms of Section 35, if it's not registered, any utilization of what has been widely accepted as a, a, a name or a trademark that belongs to you is still an infringement other than the trademark and the trademarks act. However, even after the common law, which is unwritten law, however, which are, are practices which are followed, there's something which is called passing off, where an individual would create a replica of a logo or a name which is identical to your one, not identical to the T, however, with a few alterations here and there. However, the sole intention is for you is for them or to deceive members of the public to follow them where they are not the authentic owner or the authentic logo or brand which is associated with them. The other one is called reputational protection in which the ANC is then claiming. Well, the, when you say the name of Kondo says, which is akin to us and the, what we've always stood for, and what our style was, including the late Nelson Mandela, would have stood for, you are then passing off or uh, going to create something which has a potential of damaging the reputation of the name of Kondo So on those basis, we employ you or we give, give you an opportunity to seize on your own without us going to court in using this particular brand and name so that we don't have to go to court to stop you. Once we do that, there are certain expenses which are going to accrue to you, and there will be an interdictory court order that will force you to engage or to cease using the name of controversy when even the local, no matter how altered or, or, or the alteration that you have done to the local. Mm. Uh, with speaking to a political scientist uh, a few days ago, and his understanding was that Umkonto Wesizwe is not necessarily owned by the ANC, but rather is associated with the ANC. Is this a correct understanding of or iteration of what the actual situation is? Hmm. Well, if you look at the letter that was written by the ANC today, they are basically saying we have a local that has been registered by us. Not only is the local similar to what the the other or less called version two of controversies is, except maybe for the height of the spear, where the spear is. But if we look at it passing through it or quickly, uh, one could be easily be confused in terms of saying this is the same local, if you're not going to pay any attention to detail. So that's what the basic or the basic understanding of passing or passing off actually states. And from there, the reputational protection will then apply. So yes, you may say on a technical basis, in controversies is not something which is registered to the ANC, but the question would then be, will you be able to say in controversies without akining it to the ANC? Will you be able to say in controversies if the ANC did not exist uh, in, in its entirety? So if there wasn't an ANC which was there, if there wasn't a Nelson Mandela that says we needed to bring or to build a, a military wing for the political party, then the name of controversies would not survive. So um, I, I, I would beg to differ in terms of the true or overall intention of what the name was officially there for and the manner in which this particular process is, has then uh, has to unfold. But the most strongest point, legally speaking, in this term is that you have a trademark that is registered and a trademark that must be protected. So the provisions of the Trademark Act will, have, will then come in and also the provision of common law will then have, have come in, in in terms of their protection. Mm. And just in terms of the understanding 
because behind all of this is obviously the campaign, the political campaigns consist in large part of reminding voters of uh, a partisan identity, mobilizing them to support their group at the polls based on some of what you've mentioned, uh, the logo and uh, the character of, in this case, we're talking about the ANC and Umkonto with Sizwe. So can mm. I have something that is akin to you but that has a, a totally different approach in terms of a policy and yet win the argument that because you don't really have ownership, it's not patented, and yes, it may look similar to yours, but I'm not in any way trying to steal your identity. Hmm. It, it, it all depends on, the let's call it the mark or the brand or the logo, because it, your logo must then be identifiable for any other political party that may be there. So if you look at the political parties that that's, that's are there, you'd find that they, they would play around with the colors. You'd have one with blue and one with red, and the other one with uh, black, green, and gold. Purely identifiable from one another, and it's not easily to be confused when that particular uh, uh, political party goes to the port. So in this case, I think what the ANC is simply saying, this is a logo, this is a brand new mark which is associated with the ANC. So do not go there and confuse voters as if this is a version two, a much more simplified, purest version of the ANC when actually it is not. Whether ideologically or on, or on the other side, that's the case. That's not again or there. But purely on the laws that we have in, in, in this country, the trademarks act and also the common law, you are not allowed to do that because it is taken as passing off, which the intention would be, let me create something which resembles uh, what a brand that is already uh, already in existence. Let me create something which resembles a logo which is already in existence so that I can be able to gain political clout or any leverage or mileage pertaining to the, the, the type of thing that I'm, 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 I'm campaigning about or that I'm presen presenting out there in the public. And that's where the protection actually comes in. The law says, if you want to start your own political party, go ahead and do that. You can call it any other name, just as long as it's going to be identifiable, purely identifiable, identifiable from all the other parties that are there. And the only way in which that can be achieved, if you have a different logo and you have a different name, then you can come and say, this is a logo which is totally different, the political party which is totally different from something that has ever existed before. Thank you so much for your time and insights. Mpumelelo Zigalala of uh, Zigalala Attorneys.